What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here and what I got for your face balls today we're going to be talking about Spyderco upgrades and these are kind of mandatory in my estimation uh, it just makes your experience with Spyderco knives so much better I want to bring one thing up real quick here so I'm actually in process of watching uh, Zach's live stream on Sunday uh, right at the moment, he's talking about uh, Stasa, uh, Stasa23. Shout out to Stasa. If you, you know, go and sub to their channels, Zach and Stasa for sure. Uh, but I'm actually listening to this in an earbud while I'm doing this. And, you know, I just got a lot of things going on and, and got to get stuff done. You know what I mean? So hashtag multitasking. All right. We're going to get into this. And the upgrades that we're going to do are available at ocdforedc.com. Here's the contact info here. Uh, go and check out our website, ocdforedc.com, and you can purchase these upgrades for your Spyderco knives. All right, we've got two different upgrades that we're gonna do in this video. Uh, they come in pouches just like this, and they come with stickers, of course. And what we're talking about is this knife right here and this one so this is the saint nicks manix 2 uh, and this here is a knife joy dealer exclusive para 3. now on the para 3 we are going to be installing a black cme for those that don't know what the cme is it's this little guy right here and it is called compression made easy comes to you in a package like this you get a couple alcohol wipes some uh, glue to apply it no cd for edc sticker a handy dandy little bag and then on the manix 2 uh, what we're going to do is a manix upgrade kit now this one already has a flitanium titanium ball cage in it uh, this is the one that i i showed a video a while back about how to make titanium black uh, I'll put a link in the description to that video so you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, but we're going to be installing this kit right here. Again, you can purchase this on our website, uh, ocdfreedc.com. comes with a sticker. Uh, so go check those things out. But we're going to install that because I installed the upgrade kit on my Freight and Lock Manix 2. And this one has the black aluminum flitanium ball cage. But uh, this thing's so good and amazing. Uh, this one is just lacking. Uh, it's just, yeah, not nearly as good, uh, the action. So we're going to uh, have to get these things tuned up. All right. We'll get into the Manix in a moment. We're going to do this one first just so this glue has time to set up. And I'm going to use, I've got just some glue in a bigger bottle here, just so I'm not using the single use uh, stuff. But let's get in here. So we're going to use that. I've also got some alcohol here that we're going to use. Now, one thing that you need to uh, definitely pay attention to is you want to make sure the surfaces are clean before you install the uh, CME. And so that's a very, very important portion all right we're back in now i had to stop for a moment and, and add a little comment on zach's uh, live stream there so uh shout out to zach thanks so much he was shouting out our our live that'll be later tonight so for everyone uh my wife and i do a live show every sunday night 8 p.m central time uh we have a lot of fun it's just a, a ton of fun uh it's some knife content but a lot of laughing so if you like to laugh come and join us it's a good time and the topics can be all over the board so yeah good good times for sure all right so we're going to get into this pair of three here and first things first what we're going to do i'm going to get a little bit of rubbing alcohol on this paper towel i'm also going to get some on this q-tip right here and first things first, I am going to clean the lock bar. Now, 
to install the CME, you do not have to disassemble the knife. Uh, it comes with the alcohol uh, uh, wipes there. And so you just want to make sure there's no oil or contamination on that lock bar right there. And make sure you clean it extremely well or you're going to have issues with the, the part sticking. Uh, now, I know some people have some concerns about uh, the fact that this is a, a glued on. I can assure you, uh, I did in the beginning as well. That's why I tested it out on my Para 3, uh, this one right here, for many, many months before I ever showed this off or uh, you know even told anyone what was going on. Uh, it works way better than I had ever anticipated. Originally, I was going to make these out of, you know, either titanium or copper. Or, you know, the intention was to make these out of some type of metal and then have a hole drilled through with a countersunk screw from the backside. That was the original intention. However, uh, you know, there's a lot of negatives to that. One, uh, you know, most people are not going to have the means or the tools to place that hole in the correct location. Uh, it's going to be very critical that the hole is exactly in the right location. Uh, so it would require, you know, anyone that wanted one of these sending their knife in and having a fixture to locate the hole. Um, and so you have shipping costs on top of that, you have labor costs. Uh, and what is, you know, a small $25 item real quick turns into a $100 thing. Uh, or more, actually, if, if this was out of titanium or something like that, my machining cost would be way higher. Uh, so, you know, right now it's 25 bucks. It takes a few minutes to install. <clears throat> Not a big deal. Uh, you know, I've had some people uh, say that they think that at $25 it's overpriced. Uh, I, you know, to each their own. Everybody has their own opinion. Uh, which is fine, but I can assure you that if anyone wants to go and make these, they certainly can uh, be my guest, but I can assure you it is a lot more intense than what it looks like. Uh, you know, it's definitely just a small little piece of G10. Uh, by the way, I don't think I've mentioned, I do offer these in multiple different colors and variations. Uh, I did bring a couple other colors out here, so... Let me show those. So we've got uh, a few different ones here. We've got black and white G10, uh, OD green and black layered G10. We have red and black uh, G10 and then blue and black layered G10 as well as just the standard black. And there will be other color variations coming uh, as time goes on. Uh, you know, I'm one guy and I make every single one of these um, I rough out the shape on a CNC mill, uh, but there's a lot of handwork that goes into this as well. Uh, there are multiple steps to making these and not quite as simple as what it appears. Okay, uh, make sure I got this cleaned up. Okay. All right, back in now. I had to uh, oop, throw down another comment on uh, <laughs> Zach's live here. So uh, very much uh, multitasking. All right, so we've got our CME clean. We've got our uh, lock bar clean. And now it's time, oh, real quick. Uh, we do have a paper shim. Now, when you order one of these, you get a paper shim like this and it has a link to the install video uh, and this is used as a shim which I'll show you here I just ripped off a little piece of paper uh, so I'll show you how that's used here in a moment uh, I do want to say though this is removable uh, now I do recommend disassembling the knife to remove it but the, the best and easiest way to remove the CME is to disassemble the knife and then I use a soldering iron, but you could use something else. Uh, but what you want to do is apply a little bit of heat to the back side of the lock bar. And 
grab a hold of the CME with a pair of tweezers or a little pair of needle nose pliers, something to that effect, and just put a little bit of pressure on it. And once uh, it gets hot enough, that glue will release instantly. It'll pop right off. You might have a tiny bit of glue residue stuck on the lock bar. Uh, generally, it stays stuck on the, the CME. But, uh, but you can just scrape that right off. And so you can remove it without having any sort of uh, uh, evidence left that it was ever there. So, you know, if you want to sell the knife or whatever, you want to transfer the CME over to a different knife because this will fit many, many uh, Spyderco knives. Uh, I also have a CME for the Spyderco Shaman, which that one is uh, uh, unique onto itself. So I have one that fits the shaman shaman whatever you want to call it everyone seems to have a different opinion on what it's called i personally don't care uh, but uh then this particular cme fits a whole bunch of knives uh, so pm2 para 3 uh, the uh kapara a whole bunch of knives so all right now what i do with the paper uh, i wrap it around my finger uh, just to kind of form it into a circular shape just so it's easier and kind of stays in there uh, so the paper sits just like so all right now this can be a little bit fidgety to hold the paper in there uh, but not too difficult now the way that i do this is i put the glue on the cme and i'm going to put it on here and then i'll show you what this looks like All right, so I've got my glue on the CME. And now I am going to turn it over and put it on the lock bar. And hold the paper shim. like so all right I'm just holding it here for just a moment if you guys can see that and I'm pushing you know down and in not hard enough to actuate the lock uh, just hold it in place And I'm just kind of blowing on it to help dry the glue. Probably doesn't help any, but you know, <clears throat> that's what every every human does, right? You glue something and you blow on it a bit. <laughs> okay. So we're just gonna set this off to the side and let it sit there for a moment. All right, now we're gonna jump into the Manix 2. Now, on the Manix, I'll show you here the differences uh, on my uh, Freight and Lock Manix 2. You can see the action on this thing is just fantastic. Uh, but if I break the lock, so right here, and I'm holding it with my finger on the backside, but if I let it drop, the handle just drops, just like that. This, uh, has the titanium uh, flitanium ball cage this one has a black aluminum uh, but the titanium uh, ball cage here uh, definitely provides better grip but the spring tension on this one is still very very strong and it just is kind of gritty and it just doesn't work as well as I want it to uh, but if I do the exact same thing if I break the lock a little bit so it's off I'm holding it with my finger again and then I let go of it. You can see here the handle just, you know, there's enough friction around the tang of the blade on that ball bearing that it does not fall. So you can see, I mean, I can shake it down for sure, but it doesn't just fall like the freight and lock. So that's what we're going for. We're hoping to get this type of action. 
but let's get into this thing and see what we're working with. So first things first, uh, there's a couple different things that you want to do uh, with the Manix. I've shown how to disassemble these uh, many times, but we're going to take it apart from this direction. And I'll show you why here in a moment. But we're going to pull uh, that screw out, uh, the pivot screw. Then, oh, that's a T. Where's my other? There's my driver. All right, so we're going to need a T8 uh, for the two uh, backspacer screws or body screws, and a T10 uh, for the pivot screw. There we go. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is just pull up on the scale. You can see as I'm spreading that out and then rotate it. Um, and it'll pivot on the, the uh, lanyard tube. Just like so. Right there. All right, now you can see my washer stayed on this side. Uh, and now we're, we're into this uh, knife. At this point, what we want to do is loosen up the backspacer screws on the opposite side. You don't have to go very far, just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to release a little uh, spring pressure here and open this blade and then I'll open that. Oh, <laughs> I backed the screws off too much, but that's okay. Not a problem. All right, so here we go. Uh, here is my flitanium uh, ball cage and here is the stock spring and the stock steel ball. Now, at this point, what we're going to do, I'm just wiping off some oil on the backspacer there. We're going to get our little uh, Manix upgrade kit. Like I said, you can purchase these on uh, OCD4EDC.com. Uh, it comes with this steel rod, uh, or stainless steel rod, uh, a new coil spring, and a ceramic ball. So, the ceramic ball... Uh, certainly is lighter than the steel ball, so that's a positive. We'll see if we can, uh, I don't know how accurate my scale is. You know, obviously these things are very, very lightweight, uh, but let's see if we can measure them in grams. So here's the steel ball. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be an issue. Let me see what I can do here. All right, let me clear that out. Okay, cleared out. So what is that? Point, point 0.45 grams. Get rid of that. Let's put the ceramic ball on there. 0.18. So a little less than half the weight of the steel ball. So definitely, definitely a lighter, uh, lighter ball, but also a smoother ball. All right, and then the other portion of this, which I'll show you what the stainless steel rod is for in just a moment uh, after we get this put back together, but you'll receive one of those. And here is the new spring. So you can see there is a distinct difference. The new spring's slightly longer, uh, but it's a smaller wire diameter, uh, and it is the uh, the next spring in lighter tension. Uh, so it fits right on your ball cage in the same way. Okay, now let me grab a little slickum. So I put a little little bit of slickum on the, the pivot there, just a tiny bit. And 
just working that in and then we will also put a tiny bit of lube on this side as well okay that was a little thick a little heavy zach right now is going through and uh uh who's carrying what today but i'm going to continue with what i'm doing okay now uh, the ball can only go in from one direction, okay? So so you can only drop that ball in uh, one way. And, oh, good Lord. I just dropped the ball. Hold on. Since I had to go and get the uh, ball, I went ahead and commented on Zach's video and uh, told him what I was carrying today, which was this, the Freight and Lock uh, Manix 2. Uh, anyway... Uh, so you can see here that the ball cage, you can only put the ball in from one direction. It can't, it won't work from the other direction. Now, uh, the importance of that is, is that the direction from which you put the ball, that has to be facing up towards the backspacer or the spine of the knife. Okay. Uh, if you, it will fit the other way, but if you do that, uh, it, the, the knife won't work. Um, it will the blade will get stuck. Uh, so, so just make sure that you're putting it in the correct direction. Now we can also, uh, lubricate this area after the lock is, uh, or after the knife is, uh, assembled. So we're going to go ahead and pull the blade up and, um, actually I need to put this over here. I'm going to put that down. I need to put my backspacer on and get the screws just barely started here. Okay, so the, uh, the way that I do this, uh, you can go ahead and pull uh, one of the screw, the front screw, and just loosely put the back screw in so you can pivot the backspacer just like this. All right. Now, once you have that in place, you can push that in, and you can see that the spring tension pushes the backspacer that direction. Now, what we want to do is put the blade down just like this and then you have to release a little lock tension and then push the lock back down okay now i'm going to put my screw in in the back Make sure that I'm not cross-threading that. Okay. Now, we're good. We're going to rotate this back around. When we approach this area, we got to lift it up over the ball cage. Our washer is still in place. Now, that may or may not happen for you, but, but you want to make sure your washer is in there. Yep, we're good. Uh, got the wrong screw. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick the pivot screw in. All right. The other half of OCD for EDC just walked in. Oh, hello, no. hello, hello. I'm, I am uh, doing this while listening to Zach's live stream, and I had a little bit of a uh, debacle a minute ago because I dropped the uh, upgraded uh, ceramic ball for the Manix, and oh. it went flying over there. Oh, no. So I had to stop it, uh, but it also allowed me to... Uh, 
comment about what I was carrying today. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, oh, I haven't even lubed it yet, guys, and it is so much better. Oh, here we go. All right, so my test, the freight and where's, where's, oh, there it is. All right, so here's the test. Boom. And you guys saw that this one did not do it. Here we go. Boom. Oh, oh, it's so good. Okay. Now we are uh, going to put a little KPL Heavy on the blade tang and lubricate that area. Got a lube. Yeah, you can't ever... Well, I mean, you can have too much lube. Yeah, you can. But, but I also, you know, I like the lube. Better to have too much than none. Yeah, that's fact. Facts. Hashtag facts. Yep. Hashtag facts. Is that you talking to him? To Zach there? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, actually, there was a, another watcher that uh, said they had a, uh, a wolf um, husky mix. Oh. Okay. And I was like, oh, how big. She's gotcha. 120 pounds. So. Well, I just heard Zach say Junior was in the Air Force. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming he's talking about our Junior. So, yes, and I was getting there. Um, okay. So I gave the person my Instagram because uh, they were asking for my Facebook, which y'all know. I quit that. Quit Facebook. All right, speed it up. I got things to do. Oh, my. Let's and go. And then, uh, so... Then the person asked if our kid was the my profile picture, and yes. Gotcha. So. Okay. All right. So uh, so we got this done. We got the pair of three done. Uh, real quick, to give you the update on what the stainless steel rod is for, and what this does is if you want to relax the spring even more, if you want less spring tension. Now, this works on the stock as well. And that's really what it's for is for the stock spring, but you get it with this upgrade kit. So if you want less spring tension, uh, what you do is open your knife completely, pull the lock back uh, as far as it'll go, and then place the rod right through like so. And then you can uh, leave the knife set like this overnight and it will... Uh, compress that spring to its fullest uh, extent and then um, it will relieve uh, the tension on that spring over time so you know you can leave it in there overnight you can leave it in there for multiple days if you want it's totally up to you I would recommend for the first time put it in leave it overnight check and see how it is the next day uh, but you can continue putting this in there so you get a spring the rod and the ceramic ball obviously these are the stock parts that i removed from this knife uh, but all of that is 16 bucks on our website ocd for uh, but you guys can see here action oh it's so good you want to feel it now go ahead and give give her a what for you can do that you can pull it back and just swing it yep oh, oh hey it's good right yeah that's yeah, nice. it's so, so good. It's so, nice. so it's perfectly centered. No blade play. It's solid. This thing is. So now I've got two badass Manix 2s that the action is oh, so good. So good. Okay, let's push that out of the way. Back to the pair of three. Uh, let me, we're going to do this. And then I need to get the paper out of there, which I may, in my haste, have glued the paper in there a bit. Whoopsies. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Just got it. Biting me. Okay, so there you go. There is the CME on the pair of three, uh, not lightweight. I don't know what I was talking about. Uh, now, this knife is brand new. It's awfully tight. Uh, but that's what the CME looks like on the pair of three. Boom. Excellent. So this thing needs uh, a little bit of, probably lube it up a little bit. Oh, no, it's getting there. She's getting there. Boom. All right. Right-handed. 
Oh, yeah. What do you think? Black CME on the green? Yeah, it's good. Looks good, yeah? Yep. Perfect. All right. All well, there it. you go, guys. Uh, go check them out on the website. Pick up your CME. Pick up your Manix uh, hardware kit, upgrade kit. And we also have Manix ball cages. So we are a new Flytanium dealer. Uh, and right now, we're out of stock on several of the colors. We do have a few colors left in stock. Go check out the website. But there will be more coming very, very soon. So check back on the website. We're going to have several of these. And in these kits, you get the ball cage uh, in varying colors and materials, as well as the three items that we talked about, the stainless steel rod, the spring, and the ceramic ball. Uh, like I said, these the colors of the ball cages will be back in stock very, very soon. Uh, so keep checking back. And another update on the website, we now can accept uh, uh, credit card payments. So before we were using exclusively PayPal, uh, but now we have opened that up to accepting credit card payments as well. So thanks so much, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video about the Ultimate Spyderco upgrades. Uh, and the CME will fit many, many models. Uh, but the Manix upgrade kit will work on the Manix 2, the Manix 2 XL. And uh, technically, it fits the Manix Lightweight as well. However, um, I have several videos about the Manix Lightweight, how to disassemble it, and what all it takes to do that. The hardware is very, very, very difficult to get your hands on. Uh, so, it, you know, some people have even gotten mad at me, like I'm holding out on them or something. I 100% am not. Uh, but if someone has an outlet for the hardware, uh, by all means, let me know. I would love to get my hands on it. I just can't find it anywhere. So I have had a few pieces over the uh, the last year or so, I was able to uh, upgrade a few Manix 2 lightweights with uh, uh, actual uh, screws instead of the rivets. But like I said, those screws are impossible or next to impossible to find. The only place you can get them is from Spyderco and they will not sell them to you. So it's very, very difficult to get it. But uh, anyway, so hopefully you guys enjoyed all that. Thanks so much. I'm gone.